Hello everybody, my name is Drake Tola. And I'm Acacia Lane. And we chose the topic of white collar crime to show how it affects the people of America. America. Um, we chose white collar crime to shed light on the subject because it is an often overlooked um, area of crime and it is thought to be victimless. However, it is one of the most popular co uh, types of crime and it accounts for an estimated $30 billion lost a year. It impacts not only the big wigs on Wall Street, but the mom and pop investors as well. Um, We're gonna cover a few different types of white collar crime and the first example will be an investment scheme. Uh, we have a short clip for you here from the movie Wolf of Wall Street. Sorry, uh, I, I appreciate the call. I really have to give this some thought and uh, talk to my wife about it. Uh, oh, can shit. I call you back? They don't know, right? They gotta think about it. They gotta talk to the fucking wives or the fucking two. It's very the point is, it doesn't matter what the fuck they say. The only real objection that they have is that they don't trust you guys. Why should they trust you? I mean, look at you, you're a bunch of fucking sleazy salesmen, right? <laughs> so, what do you say? You mean to tell me that if I put you in at Union Carbide at a 7 and took you out at 32, Texas Instruments at 11, and took you out at 47, U.S. Steel at 16, took you out at 41, you wouldn't be saying to me right now, Chester, pick me up a few thousand shares at Disney on the spot right now. Come on. I mean, honestly, Kevin, honestly, <laughs> seriously? I, I don't know you. You, you cold calls me. You're a total stranger. I have a complete agreement with you. You don't know me. So I don't know you. Just a moment to introduce myself to you. My name is Holden Kupferberg. Robbie Feinberg. Just your name. I'm senior vice president at Stratton Oakmont. And I plan on being one of the top brokers in my firm next year. And I'm not going to get there by being long no, standing. I do want to say that. You, you sound like a... <laughs> You sound like a pretty sincere guy. It's not going to make you rich, and it's not going to make you poor. But what this trade will do is serve as a benchmark for future business, Kevin. You feel comfortable with me now, Scott? And then you'll know for sure that you finally found a broker on Wall Street that you can trust and who can consistently make you money. Sound fair enough? You know, yeah. You're, I guess I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> Kevin, you give me one shot here on a blue chip stock like Kodak, and believe me, Kevin, the only profit you're going to have is that you didn't buy more. Sound fair enough? <laughs> Shit, my <laughs> room. Uh, <laughs> my wife might divorce me, but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Excellent choice, Kevin. How much you want to go for this time? Let's do five, five thousand dollars. We try eight thousand, Kevin. All right, let's do ten. Ten. You want to do that? Excellent choice, Kevin. Let me lock in that trade right now and get back to you in a few minutes with an exact confirmation, Kevin. Right. And welcome to Stratton Oakmont. Thanks, man. I'm gonna have a beer. Right? <laughs> it's fun. Take it easy, Kevin. Hey, uh, thanks, Jordan. Thanks a lot. Fuck! Fuck! No! 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 Yeah. So, as you can tell from the video. Investment schemes involve quite ruthless people. Um, an investment scheme is defined as an unexpected victim is contacted by an act actor who promises to provide large gains on a small investment. The main character in that video is named Jordan Belford and he opened a brokerage firm called Oakmont Stratton. They became popular by using a type of investment scheme called pump and dump. This is a trading scheme where brokers inflate stock prices through false and misleading positive statements and then sell them cheaply uh, purchasing stock at a higher price. Once a stock has been purchased at an inflated price, Belford and his brokers would dump their shares and, and the stock prices would collapse and the investors in turn would lose their money. Then, as the firm began to grow, they began to use penny stocks um, as a way to gain high returns on the investments, but not return those monies to the investors. So, penny stocks um, are used as an investment of a false percentage of a large gain, leading to huge gains by the broker um, who bought the stocks for pennies on the dollar. 
Eventually, in the late 90s, Jordan Belford and Oakmont Stratton were found out and began, came under investigation by the FBI and the SEC. Eventually, it was found out that the firm was trading false, falsely and embezzling money. So, Oak, Stratton Oakmont was fined $2.5 million in civil securities fraud and was forced to return money back to the investors. Overall, Oakmont Stratton affected over 1,500 individuals and cheated them out of an estimated $200 million. Jordan Belford eventually came under investigation as well and was sentenced to four years in prison and had to pay fines of $110.4 million. He would ultimately choose to cooperate with the authorities and some of his colleagues and the prison term was reduced to under two years. A similar type of investment scheme is a Ponzi scheme. This is another type of investment scheme where an unsuspecting victim is called by an actor and the actor promises enormous gains on small investments. For a Ponzi scheme to work, it needs to be structured like a pyramid, meaning the first investors will give capital to the broker and they will in turn go out and tell their friends and family that they are getting large returns on small amounts of money. Then they will invest their money and the investments that the following people make go to pay the dividends for the original investors. Meaning without investors the scam will fall apart. <clears throat> when <laughs> Related to that is the 419 fraud. What is a 419 fraud? These games, a person is asked to help transfer money out of another country in return for a small percentage of the money they help to transfer. These transactions are mostly done through email. Here's the catch. While being so extremely courteous to this complete stranger, the fraudster will ask you for large amounts of money for different fees and problems they may come in contact with. Also, these fraudsters will end up asking the person for their account number and information so that the transfer can go successfully. Ultimately, in the end, the fraudster will empty your bank accounts after receiving your information, so be careful. If you think that you could possibly be victim to a 419 fraud, these are easy ways to avoid them. Get rid of all spam emails. Never pass out your banking information to people you don't know. If it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. Okay, there's been over $12.7 billion lost to these scams in the year of 2014 alone. Studies have shown that it has grown by 5% since January 2015. So please be careful. Chris and I text several times a day. Usually he's texting me and asking me for money. Right now he's asking for $2,000. He says, can't you send me little funds as I did not take from the $24,950 anymore, babe. I said, honey, I have $200 to last me till the end of the month. And then I said, I love you the most, this my sexy king. He says, any update yet, Sarah? And I said, no, honey. He says, why, Sarah? We need more funds to proceed on what's going on here. I will send him whatever he needs if we don't get closure to this soon. Sarah has sent over $1.4 million to Chris Olson, the man she hopes to someday marry. There's only one catch. They have not met in person yet. Now, Sarah's cousin, Crystal, and daughter, Candace, believe Sarah uh, may well have been scammed by her online lover over the past 17 months. But Sarah says that her heart has told her that Chris Olson is real and is the man of her dreams. Let's, I, I want to take a look at 
these letters that he sent you? Because you admit he touched your heart with these things. He said, hey, babe, I want to start by saying that I miss you, and you have no idea how much I love you. I know you don't need another reminder because I tell you every time how much I love you. But I do, and that is my only way to show you. And I know my simple words can never compare. From day one, I knew there was something in you that no other woman had. You know, that's, any woman wants to hear that, right? And apparently a lot of women do hear that. Um, because I searched the internet and that exact letter, look at it, word for word. That love letter comes from scam alert website, pigbusters.net. He didn't write that. It's a form letter that scammers use. And here's another passage. You are the most amazing woman I have ever known. Thinking back, to the strange when we'll met, how we grow so close in just a few short days, and wife, it makes me smile and fall all over for you again. You are the most amazing woman I have ever met. Thinking back to the strange when well met. And you, you see, even the mistakes are the same. Even the first one in January, the first time I heard you say the words, I love you to me, here it is, the first time I heard you say the words, I love you to me, from the very beginning. Honestly, if someone was sending me that much money, I would love them too. But I think my mom wants to be in love so bad that she doesn't. She isn't open to realizing that there are bad people out there that don't actually care about anybody but themselves. You think about everything that you've heard so far. It's overwhelming. You know, the excuses for not meeting you, credit cards stolen in Africa, bank froze assets, yellow fever, arrested at airports, expired visas, stuck in Nigeria in custody, sold father's property in South Africa, money was stolen arrested and convicted of money laundering in Nigeria, can't leave until Nigerian government's paid value added tax. All of these things, all of these excuses that he's given you. You know, we looked in to these things, okay? We looked into, uh, like, sold father's property in Africa. That money was stolen. There's no record. Of that. There was no there was no property sold. There's absolutely no record of it whatsoever. Arrested and convicted of money laundering in Nigeria. We, look, there, there would be an arrest record, right? There would be a jail record. There would be bail record. All these are records. There's no record. Can't leave Nigeria uh, government until the value added tax is paid. That's just false. There is no law that they restrict your travel because you don't pay a 5% value added tax. That's just simply not there. We've talked to them. That's just simply not the case. Now, as you see in that video, catfishing is known all across America. Okay. Everyone's heard of eHarmony, Christian Mingle, and even black people me. With all of these guarantees of love and perfect connection, you would truly believe that there wasn't any kind of scams or scam artists on these networks. Many of the artists, many of the scammers target lonely people who are truly looking for a relationship and seem desperate for love and affection. These different profiles are known as catfish accounts. Some scammers have over six accounts on different social media sites. Catfish and you. There's been over 221 reports of dating scams in the year of 2015 alone. There's been over a $1.27 billion loss in finances in 2014 and 2015 together. Scammers are using 
new social sites such as Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook platforms to perform these catfish scams instead of dating sites. If you think you're being catfished, look for these things. Fake photos. A lot of the times you can research these photos and look them up on Google to make sure that it might be a real person. If the person asks you for any amount of money, tend to stay cautious or just say no. Never send people on social media money or give them your banking information. Embezzlement. Embezzlement is defined as theft or larceny of assets by a person in position of trust or responsibility over these assets, usually a part of a corporate or business setting. What to look for? Studies show that people who tend to do these different things are known for embezzlement. They usually work overtime, spend money excessively on flashy things, take work home, never take vacations in order to stay under the radar. A lot of time, petty cash goes missing and loss of office supplies increases. In order for someone to be charged for embezzlement, they must first, there must be a confidential relationship between the two parties. Two, the defendant must have acquired their property through the relationship. Three, the defendant has to give this property to someone else after they're taken, after they've taken full ownership of the property. Four, all actions must be intentional. All right, everybody, thank you for watching our video on white collar crime. I hope you learned a lot. Make sure you watch out for all of the signs that we told you about to inform you that you're being schemed and do not be a victim. This has been a public service announcement.